Okay. So, um, thank you guys for being on. Like I really just, I had someone who's not on tonight. She wasn't able to be on, but she'll get the recording. She, she was one of a few people that have messaged me over the last like few years, just saying you should totally do like a seminar on this, you know? And I just always felt like very underqualified because I've never gone to school for finance stuff or anything like that. But I was raised by parents who just really taught me the value of money, taught me how to save, um, taught me how to work hard, those kind of things. And because of all of those things and then some other stuff I've learned along the way and just trial and error and things that I personally do, um, I've really managed to save a lot of money. I've managed to invest and invest well. Um, just a lot of things that I've done over the years. And I just thought, if people are asking, okay, then I guess I'll share. Maybe it won't be super valuable to some. Maybe it will. I think sometimes we get into whatever we do every single day, we think it's just normal for us. We're like, so my normal life I think is just normal, but other people might see it as like, gosh, that's amazing that you do that. You know, so I'm just going to share and I really hope it helps some of you guys. So I wrote down a bunch of notes, just kind of collecting my thoughts. Um, if you guys have a notepad, you might want to take one out. You might want to take notes. Some of these things might be great for you. Some of them you might already know. Don't know. But first things first, um, if you don't already have a checking and a savings account, a savings account, you need to make sure you open those. So that's the very, very first thing you need to do. To, to do. Um, you need a checking and a savings account. Um, I personally use USAA. You can't use USAA unless you are either in the service or had a family member in the service. So that obviously, it doesn't really matter what you use. They're almost all of them are super free. So you just got to look in to make sure that you find one that's free. Um, I've never had an issue. One thing I do like about USAA, if you have access to it, is they have a lot of free financial services and they have really good quotes for like insurance, homeowners and, and auto. And also anytime you take money out of the ATM, they return your fee. So that's kind of a cool thing. I also pay all my bills from USAA. So I stick them into like, you just have to pop them into your bill pay. And then they send my, I just tell them when to send it, but they send my uh, checks to pay bills every month and they pay for the stamp. So it saves me a stamp. <laughs> so anyway, just another like little, if you have access to that, I think it's great. But a lot of companies do very, very similar things. So just look into that if you don't already have one. Um, um, I'll come back to that. So one of the things that I like to start off with is an emergency fund. I was just asking Tara before we started, like, have you ever heard of Dave Ramsey? Have you ever done that? And she's like, yeah, totally. We did that before. When we did, when we were on, when we were working it, it worked great <laughs> so, when you're sticking with it. Um, so one of the things that he talks about um, is having an emergency fund of $1,000. I 100% agree with that. Um, and the reason I say that is there's some things I don't agree with on him, but a lot of things I do, most things. Um, I totally think the first thing you need to do is set up so I told you have an account, have a savings account. So you're going to set up your savings account and your checking account. It's going to be the same bank. So every single time you get paid, whether you save $5 or $50 or $100 or whatever you can spare, make sure that you set up automatically for that money every time you get paid to go into that savings account. Like I said, if you have to start small, 5, 10, 15 bucks, fine. But think about all the things that you're spending every day. Like, are you ever going to get coffee? Are you ever going to the grocery store and buying things that you don't actually need at the grocery store. Are you ever going and buying clothes? Like, are you, what are you doing on a daily basis? How are you spending your money? You know? So think about all those things and think, okay, am I going out to eat? Yeah. I probably didn't need to do that. That costs $30. I can save $30 a paycheck or whatever. So figure out the number that maybe you can cut out some things and you can save this Whether Like I said, it's five bucks. Fine. If that's all you can spare, I know you can spare $5 because everybody, every once in a while, spends money on things they don't need, right? So put whatever you can, every pay period, into the savings account. But make sure it's set up to automatically go in. If you don't know how to do that, I can totally get with you later on your bank. But every bank, when you log in, you can actually set up automatic transfers. So I have it set up because I have a savings account within my bank account. I have another savings account too, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. Um, but I have a savings account attached to my checking account. So at the same bank where every single first and 15th or whenever I want it to be, cause I work for myself. So I don't actually get a paycheck, um, at a set time. Um, I set it to where it comes out at this day and this day. So I have to make sure since I'm self-employed that on the first and the 15th, I actually have money in there for it to go to transfer over. But if you have a paycheck that you get at a certain time, set it up for that day to come out and transfer into your savings account. So 
like I said, once you get to $1,000, that's your emergency fund. You have to pretend like it's not there. It's literally for emergencies. It's not for, oh, I need to go get some coffee or I need, you know, whatever. Like it's just, it's just, it's literally for emergencies. Your car breaks down, things that are like a necessity, okay? It's not for things that you don't need. Um, once you have your first savings account established at $1,000, then you're gonna set up a second savings account. So this is something that I do personally. I think it works really great. And this is why I talk about it. So that $1,000 emergency fund, you just leave it alone, pretend like it's not there unless you absolutely need it for emergencies. Don't just drain it because you see money in there. Pretend like it's not there. Your second savings account, you're gonna do the same thing. So you've already got your 1,000 drafted into there. Now you're, gonna do, now you're gonna start drafting again into a new savings account. So a whole separate account. Don't let them be combined. You can set it up within your same bank. You can actually have two savings accounts with your same bank, or you can have an outside savings account, which is what I actually have. Um, I have, a, have one through Discover Bank. And what's cool about Discover Bank is they pay higher than a typical bank, like their dividends, like their, I guess, your interest for having your money in there. Um, it's not, I think it used to be a lot higher than it is now. My mom might know. I think it's 0.6% right now. Is that right, mom? I think it is, um, or maybe even 0.7, but. Yeah, but it pays almost a percent. I mean, half to, a little, more than a half a percent where most banks might pay like 0.01% and like some dividends. Um, so it's actually a lot better than any other bank I found where no money is taken. It's not attached to stocks or anything like that. So um, I do like the Discover Bank for that. Um, also the Capital One, um, I'm trying to remember what it's called now, I used to have it, but it's another savings. It also has a higher percentage, but it's, it's less than point six or point seven. So if you want an outside bank account that makes a little bit on your money, that's a good one to do. And what's great is whenever it transfers, it's actually kind of harder to get to and it takes a few days to transfer back. So it's even more out of sight, out of mind. So like that's kind of nice because it's not just at your fingertips to pull out and grab anytime you want, but it's still yours. It's not like you don't have access to it. You have complete access, complete control. Um, so set, set, set that second one up. That second one is going to be for a lot of other reasons, but you're going to set that one up and I'll get to that whole thing later. Um, okay, let me get back on track here. So, doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, oh, I was going to say too, on your emergency fund, if, you're, if you've already got your 1000 and then you've opened your new savings account, if you can still contribute five bucks a month just because you can or 10 or whatever to your emergency fund, do that. There's nothing wrong with having, in fact, Dave Ramsey teaches this and I, um, I think it's the best. There's nothing wrong with having three to six months of expenses saved just in case of an emergency like COVID <laughs> or anything else that might happen. It's really, really good to have money saved just in case. I mean, how many of you guys struggled because of this COVID? How many of you guys lost your jobs? You know, I mean, my husband and I, are self-employed but at the time we were both working outside the home as well for a for like I had a waitressing job and he had a graphic design job because we were paying two mortgages so we just did what we had to do to pay two mortgages well we both lost those jobs you know so I know it's it can get really hard um so other thing that you want to do is you want to make sure and track your spending like I was saying earlier like how many of you like every day go get a coffee or you're like, oh, I'm just going to get a burger because I didn't plan ahead and I'm starving or, you know, whatever it is. So track your spending every single day because you're going to be amazed at how much little things add up. You can go into your bank account and go, oh my gosh, I spent $3 here, $6 here, $2 here, $4 here. And you add it up. And for the day you spent $25. I mean, that happens to so many people every single day. And if you spend $25 a day for a year, you've spent $10,000. That's crazy to think about how you could have saved that money. It's around that, it might be like a little bit less, but it's about $10,000. I've done the math before. Um, so if you could save $25 a day, I mean, that's a lot of money, but think about that. I mean, people are spending that kind of money every day, not realizing it because it's just little bits here and there. So track your spending because it really can add up super fast. What can you cut out? You know, can you cut out your daily coffee? Can you have coffee at home? You know, make coffee before you leave plan ahead, bring your meals with you. Whenever I was a teacher, I always made my lunch every single day because I didn't want to spend money going out to eat. Like it's very expensive and teachers don't make very much money either. So, so I would just buy those little dollar Michelina meals, probably not the healthiest, 
but I would buy those and I would bring an apple and a water bottle. And that's what I would have for lunch every single day. And my whole meal cost me like a dollar 20 or something, you know, however much apples cost per. So super cheap compared to going down the street to like Whataburger and paying like $10 for a meal, you know, not as healthy either. Um, so track your spending, avoid debt. One of the things that Americans are super known for is constantly getting into debt. Like people are living way above their means. Um, they're like, oh, I need a new car. I deserve a new car. I'm going to get a new car. You know, and they tell themselves these things like I deserve a new car. No, you're telling yourself lies. You, what you deserve is to have a paid off car because you will sleep so much better at night knowing that you don't have to shell out 300 to $600 a month on a car. I can't believe how much car payments are for some people. It's crazy. So if you can avoid debt, avoid debt at all costs. If you don't actually need to borrow money for something, then just don't. If your car works, awesome. If your car doesn't work, pay to get it fixed. It's probably going to be cheaper for you to get it fixed. You know, one thing that we went back and forth on, like whether or not we should have done this, my husband's transmission went out in his car already has a rebuilt engine. We'd already put money into it. We paid cash for it because it was like a $6,000 vehicle. And we, we went ahead and paid to get the transmission replaced. Do you know how much that costs? It was $4,000. It was more than the car was worth. We could probably get $2,000 for a trade-in on this car right now. But we paid $4,000 for the transmission because we thought, well, it'll last longer. And so we're just planning. I mean, that's the thing is we could have got spent that $4,000 and gotten a new car but we don't know how many more problems that was going to have. We already knew this had a new engine. Now it has a new transmission, you know, all of those things. So sometimes spending money to let it be less later on is like the best option. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, so make a plan, make sure you budget. So like every single time. So you guys probably know what you get paid, you know, mostly how many of you actually know, like have a paycheck and you know what your paycheck is going to be every month. I only see you two, but okay. There's Jessica too. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I keep muting you, but yeah, we do. No, well, I can see your hands. Yeah. I have it as a, as the whole gallery, but um, Jessica, Tara, I don't know about Darla. I know my, um, I don't know, Josie, I think she kind of does, um, kind of works for herself a little bit. Darla has one too. So most of you know what your actual amounts are that you get for your paycheck, paychecks. I don't know how many, sometimes you get paid once a month. Some people get paid twice a month. Um, some people get paid every week, but whatever your paycheck is, you're, you've got to budget. So what I do, I really like paper. Some people really like Excel. I've just never learned that. So I just, I literally, obviously I like paper. I write everything on paper, but so what I do is I do finances and I do this every month because it's fun. I love to do this <laughs> and I write what all my bills are, how much they are. I write, um, like savings, what I'm saving that month. I write like even my groceries and my gas because it's not an actual bill, but I kind of like have that budgeted. So make sure you budget every single penny or it's, you're going to lose it. That's the thing. You're going to end up going to get a coffee and you're going to go out to lunch or dinner with friends and you're going to spend money on going out to eat because you didn't plan ahead. So I know these things sound like super dumb, but that is literally how I save a lot of money. But there's some, there's some more stuff too I want to tell you. Um, so stick to your budget. There's also like budgeting apps that you can get for free. I think one is called Mint that I've used, I've used in the past, just M-I-N-T. Um, if, if you search for that, more, up, more will pop up and you can just find the one that might work for you. But there's different budgeting apps that kind of help. Um, so just reiterating this, make sure that you've set up a checking and a savings account. Make sure your savings account is set up to go come out automatically. If you don't set it up to come out automatically, it's not going to happen because you're going to be like, oh, I don't have enough money. But if you pretend like it's a bill, it's going to go into your, your savings account. So just pretend like this 50 bucks a month or whatever you're putting in is a bill and it goes straight to your savings because you're going to need that one day in your life. Um, cut back on eating out, coffee, coffee shops, I said these things. Um, so with your groceries and your, any kind of your meals, you got to plan ahead. Um, do meal plan, do meal prep, um, pack your lunch for work, talked about that. Um, oh, there's this really cool app I love to use. It's called Flip. It's F-L-I-P-P. -P. It's free. It gives you all of the local, um, like anywhere you are. If I go out of town, say I'm in California or something, like I can go on my app and it, and it will know where I'm at, you know, because your GPS on your phone. And I can find all the local grocery stores and I can see exactly what the best deals are. So what's really cool is, like say I want to see how much avocados are. I can type in avocados 
it will show me all the different grocery stores and how much they are. So I can find out where the cheapest avocados are. Or like I shop at Aldi because Aldi is super, saves us a ton of money because we're a big family. So I used to shop at Walmart for my groceries. I save about $400 a month now shopping at Aldi. So if that tells you anything, if you have an Aldi near you, I would definitely try to do that. It's not close to me. It's not the closest grocery store to me. My gas is cheap enough to where I sa still save a ton of money going to Aldi. Um, it's about 35 minutes from me. Um, so um, Aldi is great, but make sure that you meal plan because if you don't plan your meals, you're gonna end up going, oh, I didn't plan. Let's just get pizza. You know, and pizza seems cheap enough until you need like four of them because there's like a thousand of you or something. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, but if you plan ahead, you're also going to eat healthier, which that's a big deal. Um, so the Flip app is awesome so that you can get stuff on sale. Oh, that's what I was going to say about Aldi. So with the Flip app, um, it'll tell me like the deals that week. Same with Sprouts. Sprouts and Aldi are my favorite to have like the best deals. And you can just look and see what there is go from Wednesday to Wednesday. So like every Wednesday is their new like ad that comes out and it shows you all the stuff that's on sale. So what I do when I go to the grocery store is I get all the stuff that's on sale, like all the produce that's on sale on Aldi, at Aldi. If raspberries aren't on sale that week, even though we all love raspberries, we don't buy them because they're expensive. But when they're on sale, we buy them. We buy like five of them. <laughs> so every time things are on sale, we buy extra, extra bags of apples, extra avocados, extra whatever, because we're going to eat it. That's what we eat is mostly produce, you know? Um, so make sure that you just get the stuff that's on sale. Make sure that you don't buy too much that you know you can't, your family can't eat because then it's going to get wasted. But if you know you're going to eat it, buy it. Um, another thing that's so huge, you guys, that so many people don't do this, but eat your leftovers. They're, they're fine. They're not going to bite you. Like, eat your leftovers. Don't be wasteful. <laughs> like, seriously. It is just crazy how many people, like, I went out to eat the other day with a friend and, um, she ordered um, a half a sandwich and a little bowl of soup and we were just talking and stuff and it was an awesome, awesome co conversation and stuff. But at the end I asked for a box cause I needed a box and the lady was like, do you need a box? She had only touched this much of her soup and she hadn't touched her sandwich. And she was like, Oh no, I'm good. And her son was with her and she goes, mom, that's so wasteful. And she goes, I know. And I was like, it's okay. I'll take your sandwich with me. Cause, but, and I have no shame, you guys, like my friends, when we're out to eat, they're like, Allison, do you want this? <laughs> because they know, cause I'm like, that's so wasteful. <laughs> Give it to me. I would have taken her soup too, if I knew her in it better than I did. <laughs> so, cause she had taken a few bites of it. But anyway, like, and not because like I have any shame. Cause when you heat it up, that's going to go away anyway. It would have been like, I just didn't know, know if she was going to think I was weird or something, you know, I already took her sandwich. So anyway, um, but yeah, I mean, I have no shame because I am not wasteful and I know that if I'm not going to eat it, someone in my family is going to eat it, you know? So don't be wasteful. Eat your leftovers. Um, at least take it home and, or you take it and give it to a homeless person on the street if you really don't want to eat it, but it will save you money. It gives you another meal, you know? Um, okay. So here are some ways to save money that I do on a daily, monthly, weekly basis. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I shop at secondhand stores for everything or like marketplace on Facebook, I get used stuff. Pretty much everything in my home is used. Um, my couch, I got from marketplace, I don't care. Um, my table, my dining room table, it's from marketplace. And I'm spending about a fifth less than I would have if I had bought it new. And my, my thought is, you know what, maybe in like 10 years I can get new stuff. But right now this is what works for our family and my kids are gonna ruin it anyway, so I'm not gonna spend a bunch of money on it. So. Like pretty much everything, I'm like looking at like my dressers in my room are free. Um, another thing I do is I wait until things are on sale. So like a lot of times Americans are super, Why, right now, I need it right now, right? Well, I kept waiting because this TV I wanted that's in my living room, it's like huge. I don't remember what size, like 70, whatever, 70 something inches or whatever the 70 is, 75 or something. Um, but they were, so, they, were, they were like five, 600 bucks and I was like, oh, I don't want to spend that. So anyway, I waited until Black Friday and I got it for $289 and I had to wait in line and it was kind of annoying. And then I had to go around with my car and wait <laughs> again, you know, but I waited to get it when it was cheap and I had to wait a little bit. So my TV was actually broken. So we didn't have a TV for like three weeks while we were waiting for this TV. Most Americans would have been like, I'm just going to go buy a new one. 
we need it. We, I didn't need a TV. You know, it wasn't a necessity. Food and water, shelter, that's a necessity. So we just waited and then we got it for a good price. So be patient, wait for things to go on sale, shop at secondhand stores, shop at marketplace, compare, bargain shop. Don't just go, well, it's used. This is a good price probably. Well, sometimes, especially on marketplace, you can find something used and it's not a good price. So you just got to look, look at eBay, look at Amazon. I always look at both eBay and Amazon. And then I also just Google for everything before I decide which place I'm going to purchase from. Look at shipping, look at all of that stuff. Um, let's see, get rid of cable. Like that's not something you need at all. Um, we don't have cable. We haven't had cable for over a year. Um, my mom doesn't like that, but <laughs> when she comes over, she can't watch her tennis. But, um, but you know, you can get all kinds of different, like we have Hulu, we have Disney Plus. It's cheap enough. We have a Fire Stick and we have Apple TV. Fire Sticks are super cheap, like 20 bucks or something like that. I think they were even on sale for Prime Day the other day, but, um, and you can download all the different apps on there. So like we downloaded a SheTV app and you know, you can download different apps to like watch on Fire Stick. So it's real similar to Apple TV, but cheaper. So um, that's what we do for TV and no one's ever complained. So it's great, except for my mom, love you. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> anyway um, make sure that you're couponing if you can. Um, using that flip app because that's super convenient. I literally use the flip app every time I go to the grocery store. Like when I'm sitting, as soon as I pull up to the parking lot, I'm like, oh, let me look real quick. I don't coupon because I don't have time. If you have time to coupon, you'll save a lot of money. I've never done that. So what I do instead is as soon as I get there, I don't have to plan ahead or anything. I just pull up my flip app. It's this little blue one. And the, oh, you probably can't see it. What's that one right there? It's blue. Oh, can't try to get a good. Anyway, it pops up. And all I do is type in like whatever store I'm at. So if I'm at Aldi, I'll pull it up. It tells me the weekly ad and it tells me what's on sale. So like right now I can get the Honeycrisp apples, which are my favorite for $1.49 for a two pound bag. It's a really good price. So I'll probably get three bags of those, you know? So there's all these different little things you can get 79 cents per pound for Roma tomatoes. We know whatever. I don't want to bore you with that. But the point is you can get, find all the deals there. And you don't have to plan ahead. Just look at your phone as soon as you get there. Look at that app. Um, cancel any gym membership or other subscriptions that are not needed. I'm not saying a gym membership is not needed, but for some people, do you go? <laughs> so I know that for me, I paid for a gym membership for a really long time at the Y and we never went. I was just like, well, one day we'll go and I don't want to have to pay that one fee again when you first start. You know, so I finally just canceled that because I was just wasting like 50 or something dollars every month, you know, and so that could have been going to my savings account. But um, anyway, so just cancel other subscriptions that you don't need. Like think it like think, just think about the things that you're paying for every single month. Um, we just got rid of Netflix and we got Pure Flix instead. Not the best acting, but really good storylines. It's like Christian TV version of Netflix. Um, but we got rid of Netflix because of that whole you know, cuties thing. But anyway, um, so we've got, let's see. Okay. So this is the thing where, that I disagree with, um, with, um, uh, Dave Ramsey, just really kind of the only thing, but he talks about like, uh, not really building your credit because you can pay cash for everything. Well, I think that's a great concept, but you really do need to build your credit and you need to have good credit. And so, um, as a real estate agent, I can't tell you how many people you know, really want to buy a house, but their credit's too bad and they can't. They either can't or they have a really low rate because their credit's not good. And it's because they just didn't know. They weren't taught. They missed a bill and thought no big deal. And it kept lowering their credit score. You know, just little things here and there. So make sure that you do get a credit card. And I don't want to say make sure because I was talking with uh, Tara and Heath before we, you guys, we started. But the thing is, most Americans can't handle it. They get a credit card and they think, Ooh, I'm just going to swipe it everywhere. And I got all this stuff, right? You have to only spend what you can pay off every single month. This is something my parents taught me. You cannot spend more than you make. You cannot spend more than you can pay off completely, even after all your other bills are paid. So I love the credit card concept because we get a lot of free things because of the credit card. I have an Amazon credit card. Everything I buy from Amazon goes on in my Amazon credit card. What's really cool is that every single month I get points from all the stuff I, I purchased 
and I get money off. So like sometimes I'll get a hundred dollar thing for free because I have a hundred, I have 10,000 points to use or whatever. And that's like a hundred bucks. Um, other thing, I have a Southwest credit card. I love my Southwest credit card because I can get free flights. I have flown for free multiple times, probably three or four times in the past couple of years. And then I've, I'm currently saving up my points to, my, for, to get my whole family on free flights. I think I need like two or three more uh, flights, but I already have like four to five free flights saved up on my Southwest card. That's just from using stuff that I would be buying anyway with cash, which the Dave Ramsey would tell you to do, but I'm putting it on my credit card and I'm just paying it off at the end of the month. So that's the only thing that's scary is that if you don't, if you don't have the, um, the like will, what's the word I'm looking for? Like self, yeah, the self-discipline. Thanks mom. If you don't have that self-discipline to, you know, not spend on your credit card more than you can pay off at the end of the month then don't get one. So don't hear me, don't get one and then go, well, Allison, you told me to get one, now I'm in trouble. <laughs> so hear what I'm saying. You know, I do think they are amazing tools, but you have to pay it off at the end of every single pay period. As soon as it's due, pay it off. Or your credit, well, your, I, wouldn't say, I shouldn't say your credit's gonna go bad with that, but it can, depending on how bad it gets. But you definitely wanna make sure that you're not paying minimum payments, because credit cards have anywhere between like 14.99 to like 35.99% interest rates. That is ginormous. Think about like a car loan. It's like 2.99% house loan. Right now they're two to 3%. Like 25% is really, really high. Even 15% is really, really high. So if you have a $2,000 credit card and you're paying 25% and fees alone because you didn't pay it off, that's bad. So that's why I think credit cards are great. If you can pay off in full, you don't ever pay those fees. So if you pay off your balance in full every month, even if you only spend $100 on it and you pay it off in the month, that's gonna build your credit. You're not gonna accrue any fees. And, it's gonna, and, that, and that's the thing is it's gonna give you good credit, not just build your credit in general, it's gonna give you good credit, you want good credit. Anything over like 730 is considered excellent and you're going to get the best rates for any kind of loan, which I don't, I don't think you should get a car loan, just a house loan. So that's another thing we'll talk about. But, um, so let's see. Okay. I said all of the things I wanted to say there. Does anybody have any questions about any of that yet so far? What do you think about people that already have credit cards and don't, aren't able to pay them off at the end of the month yet yeah, or so like right now i'm going to talk about like debt snowball stuff which is another dave ramsey term but i'm going to talk about that in a minute because you probably might you might have debt right now and that's the whole reason you're on here you know because you yeah. want to learn like how i can how can i get rid of this debt so i will go over that and if, if you still have a question after that just let me know okay um so if you don't have the discipline to only charge normal necessities each month, then a credit card is bad. But if you do have the discipline, then get one um, or use one if you already have one. Um, lower your bills. So here's another thing that people don't realize you can do is um, you can actually call your, your billing, your different like bills. I wouldn't say your utility bills, but you could call like your cell phone company. You could call your, if you do have cable and you're not willing to get rid of it, you can call these all the time and you can you can lower things i actually called um at t like i don't know a year ago now maybe but i would call all the time and like check up on them so i called and i would just say like hey do you have any specials going on right now so i called um about a year ago and i said hey um you know you guys are kind of high compared to these other companies do you guys have anything going on right now and they're like actually we do and literally cut my cell phone bill in half it's like the same price as t-mobile for four lines I was so surprised and they said, yeah, we're doing this to compete with the other companies. And I was like, wonderful. But see, the thing is, they're not going to do it for you if you don't call. So if you have some outrageous cell phone bill, they're not, they're not going to say anything. They're happy to take your money. So that's why every once in a while I would call and be like, listen, T-Mobile had this really good deal. What do you guys have that's similar? And like, sometimes they would lower my bill anyway, but now they actually had this better plan. So you can always call and find out like the best, um, you know, options, I should say. Um, same with like internet, you can always do different things with there. Any, any kind of anything that's like not a utility bill that, you know, that they get from your meter and stuff like that, you can always negotiate stuff or you can at least try. I can't tell you how many times I got like 10, $20 a month off 
from like, you know, direct TV or something just because I called. So they just do stuff like that if you call. Um, I don't have direct TV anymore, but used to. Um, Same thing with um, auto insurance and stuff. Yes. I have that on here too. So um, wherever I have insurance, I have insurance down here, but same thing with, with insurance, auto and home, you know, call and shop around and you can do that anytime you want. It doesn't hurt your credit. It doesn't check your credit. Um, just call different people and see if they can give you a better rate. I actually never thought I would switch from USAA because USAA has always given me the best rates. But this year, actually a friend of mine is like a broker or an insurance broker. And so I had her do it for me. And um, it ended up saving me six hundred dollars a year switching with her. And it might now my my house paint my house um, my home whatever home insurance. It was a little bit higher, like two hundred bucks higher. But my auto insurance was eight hundred dollars less. So it saved me six hundred dollars in total. So I had to look at the whole thing. So even though my house payment was a little bit higher than it would have been, like not much, but a little bit. It, I'm still paying less on my auto. So it was like night and day difference, and and my RV too. I just saved a lot on that. Yeah, that's, um, that's because if you bundle, when you bundle your insurance, it's yes, like yes. a lot. Exactly. That's why you didn't stay with one and go with the other one for the home and stay with one for the car because bundling saves. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You can tell I learned from this lady. So. <laughs> <laughs> you talked a lot on your own too. Um, so another thing is um, turning off lights in your house when you're not using them. So many people, I know that sounds so silly, but just just leave lights on. I mean, I'm, I, I get on my kids every day, like, turn off this light. Why do you leave this light on? You know, but I'm hoping that'll get into their heads. So when they're older, they'll be the same way. Like turn off lights, turn off lights, turn off lights, because you have no idea how much energy that uses just keeping lights on all day. Um, another thing with lights though, is something that we did is we switched everything over to LEDs. LEDs use so much less uh, energy and they cost just a tiny bit more, but they last years and years and years and years. The LEDs that we had in our last house were still going seven years later. We never had to change them. We moved after seven years, so I don't know if they're still going, but I'm sure they are. So we switched over to LEDs and we got the cool white light instead of the warm yellow, and it looks nicer too, and it's so energy efficient. So if you can switch over to those, that, that'll save you a lot of money in bills. Um, and lights, because you don't have to keep buying lights every year or whatever. Um, keep your temperatures at a decent setting. I know it seems kind of silly to say that, but if you can manage, like we try to go as long as we can until we have to turn the heat on. Like we're like, okay, now I'm cold enough to where we need to turn the heat on, but we will go as long as we can. Like just, hey, put your house shoes on, you know, get your long pants on, you know, like we will be cold for a few days and then we're like, okay, it's time, you know? Um, same thing with the air, you know, it's like, okay, now we're sweating in the house. We'll go ahead and turn the air on, but we will go as long as we can. We'll open windows in the fall instead of having any kind of air or heat going or whatever, whenever the air feels nice, we'll just have windows open. Um, I already mentioned this, but if you eat in, you're going to save a lot of money eating at, eating at home instead of out. Um, okay. So then I have this 24 hour and 36 hour rule. The 24 hour rule is for small purchases. And this is like any kind of purchase, probably 50 bucks to maybe a couple hundred bucks. Um, this is one of those things where if you don't have to have it, you just, you have to think 24 hours. So you have 24 hours to think it over. Do I really need this? You know, and if in 24 hours you still feel like you really need it, then that's then, okay. Then get it, you know, or whatever. Um, and then same thing for big purchases is the 36 hours. Like don't purchase anything big car, even a home, anything like that. Don't purchase anything huge until you've really thought about it for 36 hours, especially a car because car dealerships make you feel like, Oh, well, this is the best price I can give you. I can't give it to anybody else. Or you know, they just make you feel like you're going to lose it. Oh, somebody else really wanted this car or, you know, whatever. They make you feel like you're going to lose it if you don't buy it right then. The best thing that you can do in that situation is to say, well, let me think about it. And they're going to still go, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's, let me give you a better price. I mean, it, it's all sales tax, tactics. Like don't fall for it. Don't, don't just buy a car because they're trying to get you to buy a car. Um, so go think about it. Always think about it because you don't want to have buyer's remorse later. Um, buy generic. We, we buy pretty much everything generic. So if we do end up getting stuff at, you know, Walmart or something, it's the great value brand or whatever. Um, Go outside more because it's free. So instead of, you know, going to um, the zoo or which is outside, but the zoo or like the science museum or whatever else you're going to go to that you're going to spend money, 
um, you know, go just go outside in your own yard or go for a walk. I mean, there's so many free parks and things that you can do that are great. Um, let's see, if you receive unexpected income, so like a tax return or a settlement of some sort, um, spend that money really wisely or better yet, save it for a rainy day or pay off debt. So those are the things that a lot of times people will get a settlement of some sort or tax money and they like blow it on something real dumb. Um, so I always just tell people like, if you can, I would first pay off some debts to help you get in a better financial situation. And then I would put the rest in savings if there is anything left. I wouldn't just spend that on anything because it's unexpected. So it's not like you were like, oh, sweet, I've been waiting on this money and now I'm going to go spend $2,000 on something dumb. You know what I mean? So make sure that you spend that money well if you're spending it at all. Um, even investing, investing it is good too. And I'll talk about investing here in a minute. Um, but don't just, but don't blow that money. Um, check insurance rates. We talked about that. Um, okay, so if you pay cash for things, which I know we talked about um, credit cards being a good thing, um, but then one thing that is nice about paying cash for certain things, um, everything is negotiable. Um, everything is. Buying a car, um, buying a TV at Best Buy, that's negotiable too. Um, so if you're buy wanting to buy something, and I know it seems weird when there's a set price, like especially if you're like at Best Buy and this is the price, you can say like, well, uh, I would do $200 cash. Can you talk to your manager about that? Like things like that happen all the time. I know it sounds weird, but it does happen. Um, another thing about, about cash too is um, medical. So I don't know how many of you guys have um, insurance or don't have insurance. I personally don't have insurance. I could pay for insurance if I wanted to. It would cost me about 300 and something dollars a month for just me, my husband and um, Koa because he's the only one that doesn't have insurance. So I could pay for that. Or I could take that $300 and I could put it into a separate account, like a health. I, I mean, it's just, a, it would just be a savings account, but a lot of times people would call it like a health savings account or something, but it would just be a separate savings account. Open up another one. Um, so you'll have a three savings accounts. I could take that money and I could put that in a separate savings account every month, 300, 300, 300. I would have just been wasting it and giving it to my insurance company, but instead, I'm putting it in my own savings account. So if anything were to happen, I can pay cash for it. The other thing that's great about that is in medical, you can negotiate everything down and it's like 60 to 70% less than what you would pay if you have insurance. It's crazy, but they jack up rates when you have insurance. So like if I had insurance, um, when I, I went to the ER like a few months back, like I think it was May or something, I get bit, bit by a spider. Some of you guys might remember, I had like this line going out my arm. People are like, you're going to, it's going to go to your heart. You're going to die, blah, blah, blah. You know, all this stuff. Anyway, so I was like, oh, whatever. I'm always thinking like, I'm fine. So I waited, but then I woke up at like one o'clock in the morning and the line was like in here and it started way down here. So I was like, okay, I better go to the ER. Anyway, long story short, I went to the ER and um, my bill was like 750 bucks or something like that. I didn't get it till later, but I got my bill and I was like, oh my gosh. So I called and I said, hey, I'm a cash payer. I don't have insurance. Um, do you have a discount for cash payer? And they, they said, yes, it's 60%. I don't remember how much, uh, I have 60 or 70, but I paid $300 out of my 700 and something dollars. I only paid $300. So what's really cool about that is they actually could even probably could have gotten my payment down less because whenever you're a cash pay and you don't have insurance, they don't really expect to ever get paid. So they typically are like, okay, what can you pay me? so that you'll just, we can wipe it out, but we just want to at least have something from this. So that's typically how that works. So if you guys have insurance, like that's awesome. And especially if like you're employed and they offer insurance for you, that's great. I just wanted to give you another perspective on it because that's what I personally do is I just save my own money that I would be paying towards an insurance company. And if I ever need it, it's cash. I just, I'm a cash payer. I'm gonna pay 60 to 70% less anyway um, than if I had insurance. So that's what's great about it. If I ever need it, it's there. So that's just a little tidbit. Um, okay, so let's see. Do, 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 do. Go to the library. That's a really great way to save money if you're wanting books or if you want to read books, go to the library. Um, DIY as much as you can. So like we built this house, we did a lot ourselves to save money. Um, just as much as you can, figure it out. Hey, YouTube is a really great tool these days for DIY stuff. Um, 
never buy a new car. So this is another thing that I'm really, really big on is never buying a brand new car. My mom is a brand new car, so she'd probably say something different about that, but she's also doesn't have kids anymore. We're all out, you know, the house, but I, as soon as you drive a car off the lot, your car is going to depreciate about 10 to $15,000, just depending on the kind of car it is. There are a few cars that hold its value well, and it's usually Honda, Toyota, and Jeep. <clears throat> Those are the three brands of cars that hold their value pretty well. Um, you're still going to lose equity as soon as you drive off the lot, though. Not ten to 15000 but you're going to lose some equity. Um, so I just, I hate that about buying a new car. I remember one year, the only time I ever bought a brand new car, it was a uh, Durango. Yeah, yeah, Dodge Durango. And as soon as I drove it off the lot, it depreciated $15,000. And the only reason I know that is because I ended up hating it and it was too small for my family. And I took it to CarMax and I got about 20,000 less than what I just bought it for a week later, a week earlier. So, and that's because CarMax also has to make a little money. So they offer you but a little bit less. So anyway, that was the most horrible decision I ever made financially, probably. Um, I don't know. There might be other things too. I've definitely learned from my mistakes for sure. Um, so anyway, I just really, really think if you can save up five to $10,000 and buy a car outright, I think that's the best thing. You know, you can get a decent car these days for five to six, $7,000. You really can. Um, especially if you get like a Toyota or Honda or a Jeep, but you can't really get a Jeep for that much. So um, even a used one. So I already talked about the paying cash for medical, um, save up and pay cash for a used vehicle. I just mentioned that. Um, let's see. Okay, next page. So vacations. Let's talk about vacations real quick. Um, I love vacations. The only thing I really don't mind spending money on besides my own house <laughs> is vacations or experiences for my family. I really, really love my family to like go places and have experiences. That's like, I, I don't care about stuff. I just want the experiences. And so I just find a lot of deals. I shop around. Um, like I'm taking my family on a cruise in February and I got the most amazing deal. Like it was like 60 bucks a person per day. Most cruises are way more than that. It was just such an amazing price, cheaper than a lot of our vacations are for a few days for our family. So, um, really cool. We also go camping a lot. And then recently I learned about this, um, BLM land. It stands for uh, Bureau of Land Management. Um, it's really cool, but it's free public land. There's not any in Oklahoma. So that's why a lot of us don't know about it in Oklahoma, but it's so amazing. We were, my husband and I just went, um, to Utah this past week, this last weekend and it was all BLM land. It was amazing. It was all these, these public areas where you can there's no restrictions. You can kind of do what you want. Certain areas said no, no fire, like no um, campfire. Um, but other than that, like you just sleep wherever, you know, I mean, it's the coolest thing. And there's so much of that land all over, like mostly um, places like Utah, Wyoming, you know, those kind of areas, Colorado, not really in, in um, Texas or Oklahoma, but there's a lot of states and you can go to the Bureau of Land Management website and you can look up different places and it's all, it's free to camp there. You don't pay anything. It's so cool. So anyway, I love free. <laughs> so, um, also you can ask your friends to use their timeshare for things. So there's been several times that we've used my mother-in-law's timeshare. Um, we've stayed for a week in El Cabo, um, in, is it Cabo, Cabo not El Cabo, Cabo. We stayed for a week in Cabo, um, on, right on the beach for 300 bucks at a beautiful, um, beautiful hotel. Um, we've stayed for a week in Branson at a beautiful, in a beautiful like condo at an amazing resort <clears throat> with swimming pools and all kinds of different activities. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, also for about 300 bucks. So, I mean, if you can use a friend's timeshare or something, like you would totally be having a good vacation for cheap. So, so just other ways to do things on the cheap. Um, so here are some ways to make some extra income. Oh, someone's trying to get in, sorry. Okay. Um, I was gonna tell her, sorry about that. Sorry, Darla, I didn't see you trying to get in. Um, That's okay, thank you. <laughs> no, you're good. So, okay, here are the ways that I wrote down to, that you can make extra income. And I put these a lot of these things down as things that I've either considered or I've done myself or have friends who are doing, <clears throat> doing them. So um, Uber or Lyft is one way that you can make some extra money. You can do that in the evenings. 
like kids are down, maybe one parent stays, one parent goes out and does this, especially if you need extra money to pay things off. <clears throat> this is huge because I'm going to talk about the debt being gone in a second, Jessica. Um, Postmates, Grubhub, Uber Eats, uh, Shipped, DoorDash, all of these things are ways that people can make easily an extra hundred bucks a day, <clears throat> depending on what you're doing. Sorry, I got something stuck in my throat. <clears> throat> I'm drinking my water. Okay. Um, you can start a business using either some type of skill you have or just your work ethic. And I say that because some people are like, well, I don't have any skill. Like, for example, <clears throat> I used to teach piano lessons, guitar lessons, voice lessons. That's what my degree is in, is, is um, vocal music education. I was a music teacher before I started uh, working for myself. Um, so if you don't have a, an actual skill, then you can just start a business with work ethic. And I say that because my son, who's 14 now, when he was 10, he started a dog poop picking up business. No one is too low for that. If you need to make extra money, that is some, there is some good money to be made. My little 14 year old boy and four years of picking up dog poop at four houses a week saved $7,500, you guys. <clears throat> it's, there's some real money to be made. And if he could have done more than four houses a week if I was willing to drive him all over town, but I wasn't. <laughs> so that was just in our neighborhood, you know? So <clears throat> you guys have a car. You could easily do that. There is amazing money to be made. I have a, a friend who has a friend, I don't know this person personally, but I have a friend who has a friend who owns a dog poop picking pit business in Tulsa and makes $400,000 a year doing this. So, I mean, I'm just saying, if you really wanna make some extra money, that's a good way to do it without having any kind of crazy skills. Everybody can pick up dog poop. And it's a really easy, quick, uh, cheap startup. You can get a $15 dog poop picker upper at, on Amazon. So, um, and I taught my son that he had to buy his own equipment too. Like if you want to start a business, you buy your own equipment. It's part of it. You have to, you have to spend money to make money, but he spent a little bit money and he's made a lot of money. Um, so some of the things I wrote down was teaching musical lex lessons, um, doing photography. Maybe you have an eye for photography. Um, I never went to school for photography. Most of you know, I'm a photographer. I've done the, the y'all's pictures for ever. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> So I'm a photographer, but not because I went to school for it. It's just because I started taking pictures and I was good at it and I just got better over the years. So maybe it's something like that, or maybe you have organizational skills. I really don't, but if you do, I would hire you. Um, uh, maybe you want to pick up dog poop. Maybe you want to clean, clean storm shelters during that season. That's another thing my son has done in the past is he's cleaned storm shelters for $25 a pop. I mean, he's got six in a day. He's just made like 200 bucks or whatever that is. I don't know, 150 bucks. I can't do math. Anyway, um, you can babysit. You can pull weeds. You can dog sit. Um, you can house sit. You can clean houses. You can be a handyman. There are so many things you can do. Another great thing is learning a trade or getting some type of license. You know, you can learn a trade like welding um, or getting a real estate license. I'm, I'm obviously using specifics that, you know, I've done, I mean, I'm not a welder, but I'm a real estate agent. So, um, and that's been great. So just little things, electrician, plumber, those are, these are licenses that you can get that you don't have to go to school for and do all this education and spend tons of money. Um, it's learning a trade and, you know, so here's some websites that I wrote down that um, you can kind of help if you decided you wanted to do this, but rover.com is a great one for pet sitting, um, care.com, you know, babysitting. Of course, there's also pages on like Facebook and stuff for those kind of things. Um, I know Josie's not on here anymore, but Josie has babysat for me. She and her daughter come over and babysit. Um, and so that's just another thing. That's why I knew she does kind of little things here and there. Um, but anyway, and then selling stuff, sell stuff that you, that doesn't bring you joy. Anything that's not bringing you joy, sell it, sell it on marketplace, sell it on eBay, whatever, just sell it. Um, and then you've got waiting tables. I put waiting tables on here because that is what I ended up doing when we were, when we had two mortgages to pay. So it's not fun feeling like you're, oh my gosh, I have like $4,000 a month in mortgages coming out. Like that was kind of what my reality was for a while. Um, and that's hard when you work for yourself and you don't really know what your paychecks are going to be. <clears throat> so I got a waiting tables job. And, you know, at first it was kind of like degrading because I was like, I have my college degree. Why am I waiting tables again? Because that's, I think that's how you and I met Tara, right? At Garfield's. <laughs> so I waited tables in, in high school and college. And in college, I met Tara. We waited tables together. 
Um, but you know what? You can make really great money. You, there are some nights we would make $40 an hour. You know, that's a lot better than any other job. And so that's why I resorted to that. But, you know, and I don't even want to say resorted. It was kind of like my first pick. You know, I was like, well, I got to get something right now that I know I'm going to make money. So I'm just going to go back to waiting tables. And that's what I did. It was just for about nine months, 10 months, something like that. But I did what I had to do to make that extra payment every month. Um, so also MLM slash side hustles. There are so many great MLMs out there. Um, there's something for everybody. You know, if you want to know about good ones and bad ones, I'm happy to tell you, happy to share with that, with that, that with you privately later. Just ask me if you want to know. Um, I'm part of a really great one. I know Tara is part of one. Darla is as well. So, I mean, there's so many great side hustles. Um, so now let's talk about debt being gone. I think this is my last bit. I'm trying to go fast. So if you guys have questions, you can ask questions. Um, I know we probably all have kids and stuff. But um, okay, so I wrote down the Dave Ramsey's debt snowball because this is the one that I think makes the most sense for most people. And I think most people can get themselves out of debt this way. So basically the debt snowball, how it works is that you pay off the smallest debt first. So I was actually taught to pay off the debt that has the largest interest rate first. So if I have a debt that has 5% and I have a debt that's 2%, I should pay off the 5% one first because that's taking most of my money with that. Now, Dave Ramsey doesn't teach that. He teaches uh, that you pay off the smallest debt first because it's almost like a little win. So even though you might have a little more that you're paying in a uh, finance fee or whatever, or like interest, um, it's, it's a win. So say I have one debt that's $400 and I stick $100 a month towards it in four months because I did some extra work. So most people, what they say is, well, I don't have extra money to put towards this, so I can't pay it off fast. That's like the number one thing people say. That's why right before that, I mentioned all these different ways that you can make extra income. What was really great about the waiting tables for me is that I'm a homeschool mom and I work for myself doing other things, but I could be home with my kids during the day and I could kind of work that into my everyday life and then I could wait tables in the evenings on the nights that I could or wanted to. I didn't have to do it every night, right? Because it's not a full-time job. Um, so make extra money, take all that extra money and put it towards that debt every single month. That first little debt, the one that's the smallest. Pay it off completely. Once you get that one paid off, all that extra money that you were paying towards that first debt that's paid off, you take that, and along with your other payment to your second debt, that's the second smallest or second largest, however you wanna look at it, um, you're gonna take all that extra money, you're gonna throw it towards that debt. So then that debt gets paid off eventually. It might take a while. I mean, this, this is the thing is, the more you have to be very, very consistent. It's not one of those like, oh, it's gonna happen overnight for you. It's gonna be frustrating. It's gonna feel like it's taking a long time for some of you, depending on how big your debt is. But I promise you that you can do it because I've had a lot of debt in my life. And I don't have as much now and it's great. <laughs> so um, I still have debt. I'm not perfect, but I am doing these. I'm putting this into practice. I wouldn't tell you to do stuff that isn't working because this stuff works. Um, so then you take all that extra money and you put it towards that debt. And then once that debt's paid off, that all that extra money, which there's, there's more now because you had that payment on this one debt and there's that payment plus what you were taking and you take all of that and you put it towards the next one, depending on how many debts you have. I don't know. You may not have that many. So that's how the debt snowball works. So anyway, that, that's really all I had written down for you guys. I'm, I'd love to answer any questions that you guys might have. Um, you mentioned the second savings account, but you didn't mention how much to put in it. <clears throat> Again, it's, everyone's gonna be different. So it's kind of like, if you can only put 50 bucks per paycheck in or 10 bucks per paycheck in, or what if, what if you can do 500? Awesome. It's just whatever you can do. But thinking about what you can cut out in your everyday life that maybe you're spending money on. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys one of my favorite little tips. Um, I get all of my clothes, like everything I own. I mean, everything, everything I'm wearing right now. I get all of my clothes from Salvation Army on Wednesday when it's half off. At Salvation Army on Wednesdays, all the clothes are half off. So I get everything I wear there. And you can find some really cute stuff. And you can find stuff that's like Express and like, um, the loft and like expensive clothes and you'll get it for like two and three dollars a piece. So I just wanted to mention that because that's my favorite place to shop. But anyway, sorry, did you have any more questions about that, Jessica? I, I, I think, I don't know, because you said 
in the first savings do the the thousand dollars that's for your emergency use what's the second savings for the second savings is for yeah i didn't get to that you're right um the second savings is for like kind of so one of the things that i like to do and this is what i use my second savings for initially is investing so i didn't actually talk about that yet um so i have a really weird investment i say weird just because it's not like a common i don't know anything about stocks so i've never invested in stocks but I've heard stocks are really good to invest in. So I'm not saying don't do that. Actually, you should, especially if you understand it. Um, but I don't understand it, so I haven't ever invested in it. Um, I have this investment. It's like this, um, it's, a, it's a currency trade, like a foreign currency trading thing. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand that either. But with this, I don't have to. I understand how this program works. It's a robot that does it for me. I stuck money in there and it makes money every day, and it makes about 0.9% every month. It makes about 100% a year. So I'm getting 100% return on my money in this investment, so I really like it. So that's what I use my savings account for, but you can't put money into an investment if you don't have money to put in. And most investments require like at least $1,000, you know? You can buy stocks for less than that, like you can buy, you know, $30 stock or $20 stock or $7 stock, things like that. Um, but mm. if you, I don't understand it. So I wouldn't be the one to like guide people on stocks. Unfortunately, I wish I knew more. I, I the two things I really don't know much about in finance world that I wish I knew more about is cryptocurrency and stocks. So <laughs> those are the two things I can't really help with. But, um, so the other thing I would use that savings account for Jessica is vacations. So that's another mm. thing that you can use it for. Um, or just to have in there, like I really like just having an um, having a savings. I mean, I have an emergency fund and I have a savings account, and it's not because I'm planning on using it for anything specific, but it's just nice having it in there just in case I want to pay cash for a car or, you know, whatever. You know. Yeah. So that's what. That's why I like having the two savings accounts. And you know, a third one if you want to save put money towards medical stuff. So that's the other thing is it could be medical stuff. So I actually didn't create a third one. I just have the two, but I could pull from either one of those if I needed to pay for medical stuff. Yeah. I just don't do well with it sitting there and I'm able to look at it. That's why I mentioned like putting um a third party one. And I saw that um Darla said that Ally has a one percent savings account. So that's that's really good. I haven't seen that one. So 1% is um, really good for just a savings account that's not attached to anything. So it's not like it's gonna, um, hang on, skim back in. There we go. Um, so it's not attached to like stocks or anything like that. So it won't hurt you. You know what I mean? Um, it, yeah. You'll never lose money, I should say. Um, so look, look up that ally one that Darla mentioned. And then there's also, like I said, Discover Bank, Capital One. But it sounds like ally might be the best option if it's 1%. But they do fluctuate um, as far as like uh, the, the um, amount that you're getting. Because like I said, when I first signed up with Discover Bank, I think it was like 0.8 or 0.9%. And now it's a little bit lower. Okay. Yeah. I am, uh, Allison, I'm on, I just went on Discover Uritis, 0.660% for savings. And um, I took out a 12-month CD back in February. And it's 1.75 only because I locked it in. So. Okay. Yeah. And that's another thing you can do too, is you can take out a CD and that's where you could, you put money in and basically they use your money for things, but you can't touch that money, which might be a good thing for you, you know, cause then you're like, I just don't do well just looking at that money there. So put it into a CD and you can't touch it for, you know, a certain amount of time, 18 months, two years, three years, five years. It's different, but you mine, make a yeah, higher. One year one. Mm -hmm. What mom? Mine is just one year. Cause I was yep. thinking that they're going to, the interest rates may go up. So I was afraid to put it in for more. Yeah. So you can, there's different amounts you can choose, but you do make a lot more than like a savings account would not a lot more, but like she said, it was 1.75%. So that might be a good option for you, but of yeah. course you'd have to have that amount of money to put in immediately. So you can't, it's not like a savings account where you keep adding to it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So right. you would have to add or save first and then put it and then do that. But it might be better for you to have a third party rather than being a part of your bank and then have it set up to transfer to that one because then you don't see it. You know what I mean? It's just like a bill that comes out. You know it's there. You can still log in and look at it. You could transfer it if you wanted to, but you have to pretend like it's not there if you want this to work. Right. I, I do have a Credit Karma savings account. Um, That's good. 
So, and they, they pull out, I think I put $50 a week in there, but that's awesome. Sometimes it's hard not to look at it and be like, Oh, there's some money there. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and there's another thing that my son told me about recently. I don't think it's like the best savings ever, but it helps people to save. And it's, um, let me see. I went ahead and got it just because I'm like, cool, another way to save money somewhere else. Like I like having multiple things. So this one is called, um, where did it go? I also use Digit. This one's called Yada Savings. My son had oh. read, had watched some kind of YouTube video about it. Um, and I like, I have like a, a referral thing I can send you because then you get like so many tickets. I don't get money or anything like that for referring people. They give you tickets for things. I don't know. But I just have where I'm saving $25 a week here. It's not anything big, but I do do that. And so like I just started it. So I've got $100 in here. And 20 cents. So I made 20 cents somehow. I don't know. So <laughs> anyway, so it's just another thing. I'm happy to send you all these different links. Like I actually have, um, if you decide that you want to get a Southwest card, I have a link that I can send you for that because it would give me credit, It'd give me points basically. Um, and these are not things you have to do by any means, but um, same with like Robin Hood. It's an app for stocks. I have like a referral link for that too, where you get like a free stock. If, if I send you my referral link, we both get a free stock kind of thing. Um, oh. and then I have, a well, I opened a, I opened a stash account and I didn't use it for a long time. And then I realized that 